A quick comparison of some of the different devices I use for listening to audio on headphones or IEMs. You could call them all digital audio players. Technically, they all are. The middle one is a phone. It's a Samsung Note 9. It has a wired 3.5 headphone jack on it. And I've done a video on this saying it sounds uh, really good. And it's there's not a great deal of difference in terms of sound quality between the Note 9 and anything else you see on the table. I think I'd struggle in a blind AB to tell the difference between all of these. Possibly, I've just had another test listen to compare. Possibly I may be able to tell the difference between the Note 9 and the Hibi R6 Pro 2 and maybe the Sony NWA306. Maybe it's placebo, maybe it isn't, but the Hibi and the Sony sound a tad brighter or sharpened. So stuff doesn't sound identical, but does it sound different from each other in terms of better or worse? Not really. Does it sound night and day different? No, not really. And as I said, I'd be skeptical as to whether I could pass a blind A-B test trying to point out differences or which one is which. But yeah, possibly on the table, the Note 9 is the weakest of the bunch in terms of not having that kind of filter that lends to clarity. But there's, there's not a great deal of difference. And all three of these do a good job at music. They play your music back and they make your music sound good. So really that's all you want. So between the three, each has pros and cons to it. And let's start with the Hibi R6 Pro 2 because I am probably going to sell this and I'm probably going to sell it because the battery life is absolutely woeful on it. You'll basically get about five hours playback on this. Now, I only use this indoors. It's not a portable device. It's quite big. It's quite blocky. Ergonomics in terms of if you're taking this out and about with you, it's not great to handle and you may well drop it and yeah, it's just big, bulky and relatively heavy and just a brick basically. So this isn't at all in my eyes portable. So it's strictly for home use. So if I'm lying on my sofa and it's late at night, I don't want to use my speaker system. I'll use a digital audio player such as the Hibi R6 Pro 2. And if I'm in bed and I want to listen to music before bed, I'll typically listen on a digital audio player such as the Hibi R6 Pro 2. So I don't necessarily need the mobility on it. So it's indoors use only. So the portability is poor. Ergonomics aren't that great, but the flip side of bad ergonomics due to size is this lovely big screen you get, which for digital audio players across different budgets, this has one of the better screens. It's a 1080p screen. And as you can see, it's quite big. It's on full brightness. Let me just double check that. It's on full brightness. So it's not the brightest in the world, but it's got good visibility, uh, good responsiveness, uh, relatively smooth in terms of the UI and stuff, relatively quick in terms of the transitions and whatnot. In terms of the screen, it's a pleasure to use and not all digital audio players are like that. So the screen on this is a lot better and in general, it's a lot better to use than something like the Hibi R5 Gen 2, which is a older and slower processor and RAM and GPU and version of Android as well. So this is just laggy, jittery, stuttery, slow and quite a pain to use.
this is okay with USB audio player pro. Um, other than that, this is um, terrible to use if you're using a streaming service. Be that Apple Music, uh, Spotify, Cobas, Tidal. It's uh, very unpleasant to use. So, yeah, the pro of the Hibi R6 Pro 2 is that the screen's nice and big and the user experience is quite good. It's running a version of Android 12 and it's got a decent chipset to make it relatively snappy and responsive. But I am thinking of selling it due to the poor, very poor battery life. When I got it, I thought I knew battery life was poor at five hours, but I thought because I'm using it indoors, it won't really be a problem. You don't really need long battery life. You can obviously plug stuff in, but because it runs out so quickly, you're charging it depending on how frequently you're listening to it. You're charging it every day, every other day. And yeah, you're just gonna burn through the battery charging it on a daily basis. So yeah, I will be selling this. I've kept the screen protectors on and um, it's in pretty much mint condition. I've not really examined it for little uh, blemishes, scratches or dings. Uh, I imagine there may be one or two, but as far as I can tell at the moment, there's no marks on it. So price wise, I'll probably maybe, maybe 200, maybe 150 if I'm feeling generous. So I'll do a video on that uh, when I make it live. So the battery life is making me want to replace this. I'd want something with longer battery life that I won't have to charge every day or every other day. So due to that, I am considering getting a new specific digital audio player. And I'm thinking of getting the Theo, uh, Theo M23, which is the latest kind of mid range mid-tier digital audio player from Fio. I've never tried a Fio digital audio player before, so I'm kind of done with Hibi now. I've had three separate Hibi, no, four actually. I've had the R6 Pro 2. I've had the R5 Gen 2. I've had the Hibi M300, which I've now sold. And I've had the Hibi R3 Gen 2, which I've now sold. Um, Hibi devices are good. They're decent, but I don't like the Hibi... OS in terms of the Hibi music playback app. Uh, Hibi, I think it's called Hibi music. So this, I don't like it. Um, it doesn't do gapless for a start with um, AIFF files and yeah, it's not, it's not the greatest in the world. I much prefer USB audio player pro. So yeah, I've had four Hibi devices. Um, they're, they're good, they're decent, but I'm ready to try something else now. So if I do get something, it'll probably be the Fio M23. So the Fio M23, that doesn't have great battery life, to be honest. I think it will give a maximum of 10 hours, 10 and a half hours. So it's not great battery life, but it's obviously pretty much double what the R6 Pro gives you. But as important as battery life is its capacity or ability to plug into a charger and bypass the battery. So have it as a kind of desktop device. So there's a desktop mode on the Fio M23. So you can plug it in to a charger, USB type C. And if you have it in desktop mode, it will bypass the battery. So the battery won't be charging, it won't be discharging. So you won't deteriorate the battery. There'll be no battery degradation when you have it plugged in and it's in desktop mode, which will of course prolong the lifespan of the device. So that appeals to me. And also I've seen on it, it's able to do airplay. Uh, this doesn't have airplay on it. In fact, none of these three devices have airplay. 
So I've got a Sonos Move wireless speaker. Sometimes I use that uh, in my bedroom mostly. And um, I can't connect, well, I can connect to it using these, using Bluetooth. But AirPlay, as far as I understand it, is uh, slightly higher quality than Bluetooth. So yeah, where possible, I'd rather use AirPlay over Bluetooth if I'm going to use wireless connectivity. So the M23, longer battery life than the, than the Hibi, twice the battery life, uh, desktop mode, which will allow the device and the battery to last longer. Also, if you need it in the desktop mode, you can get quite a bit more power if you need to power headphones. I don't need it for that. And uh, AirPlay. So three sort of improvements on paper for the M23 over the Hibi R6 Pro 2. So then the Samsung Note 9 and today just because I was curious, I've ordered an LG V60. The LG phones were regarded as the best for audio because they had um, a quad DAC in them. They have a 3.5 and I think there's different gain options. So if you need a bit more power, a bit more volume, the LG phones can provide that. The one con in terms of playing back music for the Note 9 is you're a bit limited on the volume. With something like the ZGAT Dust Syncos, it isn't a massive problem because these don't need a massive amount of power to drive them to uh, a good volume level. So the Note 9 can power something like the ZGAT Dust Syncos quite well without whacking it all the way up. So if I've got the, that's a volume, orange is like over recommended listening volume. If you turn it down a bit, press the right button, it goes to blue. So you can listen to it in recommended volume and it produces sufficient volume to power something like the Zgat Dust Syncos. For something like the Fiel JD7s or the Theodio Hype 4s, this is probably a little bit weak to power those to their sweet spot in terms of driving them. So the Note 9 is lacking in terms of the ability to drive things. But other than that, and possibly slightly less sound quality than something like the Hibi, the Note 9 is actually better. Um, it, it's quicker, it's more responsive even though it's an older version of Android, you've got a better screen. I think this can do like 4K on the screen, the resolution goes up to. I think I've got it in a turn down setting at the moment. So it might be 1080p, it might be 1440. But it goes up to 4K if you want it, whereas this goes up to only 1080p. The brightness is, I think, better on the Note 9, they're both whacked up to full brightness for the sake of the video. And although this is Android 12 and this is Android 10, this is just more snappy, more responsive. So if you're using the same app, like I am here, the USB Audio Player Pro, it's a pleasure to use on even something using Android 10, such as the Samsung Note 9. So user experience is kind of better a little bit better on the Note 9, I would say, when you're comparing these two. And obviously the battery life is going to be a lot better on the Note 9. If you are using this as solely a music playback device, the Hibi will last five hours. I've not even tested this, but this will last you probably over 30 hours quite easily. As I say, I've not done the test. That's just a guesstimate. But the battery life is clearly superior on something like um, the Note 9. And the LG v V60 that I've got as well, that has even better battery life. I've got a new one, 
Uh, it'll be coming from China, so it'll be maybe two, three weeks before I get it. I might get it sooner. I'll do a video on it once I've had some time with it. But the battery life on uh, LG V60 is uh, very, very good. So I don't even know how many hours that could give you music playback. Maybe you're looking 50, 60 hours, which no digital audio player can even dream of competing with. <laughs> so, yeah, each has got pros and cons. So if, if you want to play something back and you want the best user experience and the best battery life, you can't go against a smartphone, something like the Note 9. It's going to have the best user experience by it. Well, clearly and it's going to have the best battery life. So if that's your criteria, go with a smartphone. Now, in terms of quality, I think the Note 9 is very good quality. Very little difference, if any, between the Note 9 and the Sony A306 and the Hibby R6 Pro 2. As I say, I'll be pushed in a blind A-B test to tell the difference. Maybe I would. But it's it's more than good enough and it does the job but the LG V60 apparently will sound better than something like the Note 9 so I paid I think 195 for a brand new LG V60 on um, eBay so yeah 200 pounds for a digital audio player that is I think it ships with Android 10 but it has received an update to and um, Android 13 so Android 13 a big screen it is 1080p screen it's not a 4k screen but 1080p is enough for me um, uh, quad DAC uh, headphone jack 3.5 uh, gain options expandable storage as well which is important so you have expandable storage on the Note 9 and you have it on the LG V60, then um, that's quite a formidable package at a very, very good price. And again, the user experience is going to be better with the LG V60 in terms of the UI being slick and fast and responsive versus something like the Hibby R6 Pro 2. Hibby R6 Pro 2 is good, but a, a smartphone is going to be that bit smoother so if you're comparing it in in that respect the Hibby R6 Pro 2 is about 600 pounds the LG V60 I've paid 195 for it so yeah <laughs> it's not really a comparison depending on how you look at it 600 pounds versus less than 200 pounds so more than three times more and is the Hibby R6 Pro 2 going to sound three times better than the LG V60? I doubt it. Is it going to sound any better? I doubt it. So, yeah, smartphones really, in terms of sheer value, digital audio players are a bit of a ripoff because the value isn't really there if you're comparing stuff like the software and user experience the speed and fluidity of it and the battery life. Battery life is generally terrible on digital audio players. And yeah, when you're comparing stuff like that, the, the smartphone is just a much better value proposition. Then we've got something like the Sony NWA306. Now I really like the Sony NWA306. Of digital audio players, if you want the best battery life, you're going to have to stick to a Sony. This will give me at least 30 hours playback. It's not going to be the LG V60. It probably won't be the Note 9 either in terms of battery life, but it'll comfortably thrash pretty much any Hibby device with the exception of the R5 Gen 2, which will give you about 30, possibly 35 hours. So this has very good battery life. I'm probably going to sell this as well, actually. But be aware, the 3.5 jack is knackered on it. Um, 
it works, but you have to give it a wiggle. So one of the components has come loose inside or something. I've not dropped this or anything. It's just poor build quality from Hibby. But I will sell this. It has got some cosmetic damage, some scratches. I've taken the uh, screen protectors off. There was one on the back. There was one on the front. I've taken them off. So there are some cosmetic scratches on the back. Um, on the front, I don't think there are any cosmetic scratches. Um, it's a bit grimy. You need to wipe it down. But I will be selling this. So it's got the two, I think it's a 2.5 jack on it and the balanced. Um, so yeah, if you want uh, Hibby R5 Gen 2, keep an eye out for me listing and selling that as well on eBay again. But yeah, the Sony, if you want a digital audio player, that's going to give you 30 hours, if not more, battery life. You're going to have to stick to a Sony. So this will give me 30, 35 hours in terms of the battery life. User experience in terms of the software, the speed, the fluidity. It's quite good when you use it de-googled. Now, since doing my videos on the Sony A306, I have put... Uh, some Google stuff on there. I was curious to try USB Audio Player Pro on here. So I that does require Googling your phone, unfortunately. So signing into your Google account and um, enabling the Google spyware stuff. So um, I tried USB Audio Player Pro on here. Um, it's okay, but because the screen is very much shrunken down versus the other two, the user experience on USB Audio Player Pro isn't as nice, obviously, as it is on a bigger, larger screen device. But you can do it. And yeah, if you want to uh, de-blow your phone, de-Google your uh, Sony A3R6, that will slightly improve and speed up the software and the user experience and the user interface. And um the fluidity and whatnot. So user experience is quite good. Uh, battery life is excellent. This has a noise floor, unfortunately. So when you plug something like the ZGAT Dust Syncos in, there is an audible hiss. It's not much of a problem once you start playing the music, but there is a noise floor and audible hiss. There is no audible hiss with my Samsung Note 9, and there is no audible hiss or noise floor and the Hibby R6 Pro 2. So a con of the Sony is an audible noise floor. Another noisy thing about the Sony is, I don't know the technical term for it, but where you've got shielded um, protection for your components to protect them against electrical interference. I'm not, I don't think the Sony has that because if you've got something like um, the ZGAT Dust Synco plugged in and you are doing a task a command on this you'll hear background noise on it you'll hear it kind of processing you're probably hearing the processor do some work in the background so there's a little background noise it's a bit like the noise floor it's not very loud but you can definitely hear it so yeah, that's, that's quite poor of the Sony's. It's not an issue, obviously, when you play music and you're not messing with the screen, not pressing anything, not doing any commands or tasks. You're not going to get that kind of interference, but it is there and you can hear it. So that's something that you don't, you certainly do not get on the Hibby and um, you don't really get on the Note 9 at least if you're remaining within this application. If you're doing multitasking, so if you come out of the app and you want to open other things, there are some clicks and popping noises with the Samsung Note 9. So in that respect, it's similar to the Sony, but it doesn't have the background noises. Otherwise, if you're just staying in your USB Audio Player Pro app, and here's the obligatory ambulance. Yeah, pros and cons, they all have pros and cons, but the Sony is the only one that is portable, really. So when I go out, 
if I take my phone with me, so I've got um, a Google Pixel 7a running Graphene OS, so it's a de-Googled phone. It's quite big, similar size to the Note 9, a bit smaller. So if I'm out, I'll likely have this with me. If I'm just going for a walk, I usually don't take my phone. I just leave my phone at home. But if I'm going out somewhere, I have my phone with me. So I have my phone with me and I have the Sony with me. So that's two devices. Obviously, I wouldn't take my phone out with me and something else, which is the equivalent size and weight, if not heavier. So I wouldn't take my phone out with me and the Hibby R6 Pro 2. That's just too much weight, heft and bulk to carry. And I wouldn't take my phone out and the Samsung Note 9. And same with the LG V60 when I get it. So, yeah. In terms of portability, I'm only going to use something very small and compact like the Sony A306. Or something which is the same size like the Sony A55. Or something the size of the Hibi M300 or the Hibi R3 Gen 2. So that kind of pocketable, portable, one-handed use ergonomic size. So yeah, each has pros and cons. So, whoops. In terms of home use, really, I think something like um, a, a decent audio playback phone is kind of a better bet than a dedicated digital audio player. I do think digital audio players are massively overpriced. And although I'm willing to pay for something like a Hibi R6 Pro 2, in a way, I don't really think it's worth £600, considering the battery life is awful and the software experience is less than it is on a smartphone. And um, in that respect, it, it's not worth the money but you obviously make that determination uh, for yourself you will pay what you are willing to pay basically but generally digital audio players are overpriced for what they actually are and in terms of the sound quality at least everything i've tried it's not been night and day different or it's been barely different and um definitely not better and i've heard stuff i've heard stuff from the things i've reviewed up to i think the highest price digital audio player i've heard is a uh, hibby uh i can't remember what it was an rs6 um something that's like 12 i think on release it was something like 1400 pounds it's a bit older now and um, I tried that and I listened to the Hibi R5 Gen 2 and the difference was absolutely minuscule. There was very little, if any, difference. And again, in the blind AB, I'm not convinced I could consistently tell the difference between the Hibi R5 Gen 2 and the Hibi R6 or rs6 whatever it was the 1400 pound digital audio player i was listening to so yeah if if you're paying 500 pounds 1000 pounds 1200 pounds 1400 pounds 2000 pounds i'm not convinced you're going to hear a massive difference now at some point i may just for curiosity try something more expensive just to see if there is an audible difference. So when I replaced the Hibi R6 Pro 2, I said I'm considering getting the Fio M23. I might get something more expensive. I was considering getting the Sony NW uh, AM2 which is basically the bigger, ex more expensive version of this. That's, uh, it's about 1300, 1400, whoops, keep knocking this, 1400 pounds. 
so that's expensive. It's um, not easy to get though, other than eBay. So I'd have to get that via eBay if I do get for that. But I've heard that has a noise floor. So I'm really um, reluctant to pay over £1,000 for something. And it has a noise noise floor on it, audible hiss. I, don't, I think that's unacceptable, to be honest. If you're paying over £1,000 for a music playback device, it shouldn't have audible hiss on it. Um, I was also considering getting the Ibasso, either the Ibasso DX260 or the Ibasso DX320. But the thing putting me off getting the Ibassos is the battery life. It's 10 to 15 hours, which again, isn't great. If I got the larger Sony, larger, more expensive Sony, that has a noise floor, but at least the battery life is going to be 30 hours. So more acceptable battery life. So I've not decided yet if I'm going to um, go ahead with getting a digital audio player that's higher end than the Hibi R6 Pro 2, which is £600. I may, I may not. I suppose it depends how pleased I am with the LG V60. If I'm pleased with the LG V60, then um, I'm not going to waste money just to satisfy my curiosity in terms of trying a more expensive high-end DAP just to see if there is an audible difference or if it does sound any better. I don't think it will, but I've not confirmed that. So I'm curious enough to possibly maybe at some point confirm that by purchasing a device and listening to it for myself. So yeah, I'll keep you posted as and when I have updates, but yeah, at some point in the next few weeks, the Hibi R6 Pro will be put up for sale and the Hibi R5 Gen 2, albeit with um, a non-working 3.5 jack, but the 2.5 is working and the balance 4.4 is working. So if that interests you, keep an eye out and I'll advertise it a bit nearer the time.